Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart on the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Well, there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, yes, sir. Yes, sir. who was sinking into a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. Mm. But Paul, but Paul went down, fell on him, mm -hmm. and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Well, now when he had come up and had broken bread and eaten, he talked a long while, even till daybreak he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforter. I would like to speak to you, if I could borrow your attention, from the topic of I am somebody. I am. Yes, somebody. Youth lives matter. Yes, sir. I am somebody. Youth lives matter. Today is our Youth Sunday. And so we want to draw our attention towards our young people and some of the issues that they are dealing with. Uh, not only in the church, but outside of the church and a way that we can come together as a church, as a community to make sure that we don't lose our young people. Amen. In the early 1950s, there was a, a man named William Holmes Borders, and he was a civil rights leader um, in Atlanta, Georgia, and also a pastor at that time. And during that time, he wrote a speech, he wrote a pledge for people uh, to encourage them, to let them know that they are somebody, and it may be very familiar to some of you all, and it was entitled, I am somebody. somebody. All right. And those words say, I am somebody. I may be poor, but I am somebody. I may be young, but I am somebody. I may be on the street, and I may be homeless, but I am somebody. I may be small and not be it to you, but I am somebody. I may make a mistake, and I will make a mistake, but I am somebody. Right. My clothes are different, uh, my face is different, and my hair is different, but I am somebody. All right. I am black, I am brown, I am white. I speak a different language, but I am somebody. I must be respected, protected, and never rejected. I am a child, I am somebody. Our young people are dealing with some issues, y'all. <clears throat> A lot of times, you, you and, and, and previously, you may have heard of the Black Lives Movement, you may have heard of the Blue Lives Movement, but I want to draw our attention to Youth Lives Matter. All right. Uh, uh, our young people get treated differently just because of the two digits they have behind their name. Uh, being someone who grew up in the church, in all my 32 years, I've been in youth ministry, I've been in church my whole life, and I've seen to where uh, the youth doesn't matter in some people's eyes because they feel as if since they are older and the kids are the age that they are, they do not matter. But I'm reminded if I was to give you two, a, an example of Timothy. Timothy was charged by Paul to go out and do the work of the evangelist. And, and Paul understood that Timothy was going to be leaving some people who was older than him. Right. And because of Timothy's age, some people was already going to block him out, as some of you may have already blocked me out. And see, what Paul had to tell Timothy is that let no man despise thy youth. See, young people, understand that it's, it's going to be times that people are going to look down on you because of your age. But I'm here to tell you, as Paul told Timothy, is that you can be an example in your speech. Yes, young people, you can show us seasoned members how to talk to each other. You can be an example in your love. You can show us how we should love each other. And so Paul went with Timothy and he told Timothy to let no man despise thy youth, but you can be an example. In, in today's story, we read about a young man and his name uh, was Eutychus. Uh, we, we learned in verse 9 that his name was Eutychus and we learned in verse 7 that it says that on the first day of the week that one of the disciples came together to break bread, Paul. That right there tells us that Eutychus was in a promising environment. Most parents bring their children to church because it can be and it is a promising environment for their children to grow up 
the right way. And I'm just a firm believer that wherever the spirit of God is, then that's the right place for not just our young people, but for any person Amen. to be. It is that Amen. unfortunately the church and the youth ministry, we are in competition on what is going on outside the doors. What you mean, brother? Well, they have pop one of football. They have pop one of basketball. They have chili and they have dance. And all of that is fine and dandy, but my thing is we have to put the focus where it needs to all be. Right, all right. You see, when a pop one of football, people ask you for $300. You don't mind paying that money to them. And then when I come before you and ask you $20 to go for skating, you want to know the first thing, what can the church do for me? Can the church pay my way? You will make sure that your young people get up early on a Saturday morning to get them to practice. But when we want the youth to come out here and do a community event, you got every excuse in the world to not come. This ain't going to be no sermon where I'll probably get a whole lot of amens well, well, or whatnot, well, well. but I'm just going to let the Lord use me. See, we're willing to pay for all of those things and make sure that they get the practice and performances. But when it's time to go on a youth trip, when it's time for the youth ministry to get here, there's no one here but the adults. Yeah. We quickly say that we want to go on this trip, we want to go on that trip, but when it's time for the fundraiser, when it's time for the car wash, there's nobody here but Brother Butler and adults. Uh, washing cars, and then you wonder why your child didn't get any money and put towards them to go on a trip. Uh, but let the pop go on a PAL and a United Way and the Boys and Girls Club say you need $100 just for registration, bro, Brian. That's just $100 for registration. You ain't paid for the physical yet. You ain't paid for the uniform yet. You ain't paid for your AAU tournament fees yet. Oh, you'll be willing to pay. And on the main day that you have the rest on Saturday morning, you work before the kids. You got your face painted. You got your little shrinkers in your hair. Well, 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 come you got on. the kids' stuff all packed up. All that that need to happen now is kids need to get up, brush their teeth, have breakfast, and get out the door. And then we get to Sunday morning. Everybody's struggling to get up. Sometimes the kids may be trying to wake the parents up. And then let's go a little bit further. Nowadays, kids have a choice if they even going to come to church or not. I mean, I'm not all that old, but I do remember a time where I didn't have a choice to go to church. You see, there was a time when I was at Reebok, I was in the band, and the Friday nights, that was a night for football and even basketball, and, we, and I was in the band, so a lot of times my grandfather, he'll come pick me up and I'll stay the weekend with him, or he'll get me on Saturday night and I'll stay the weekend with him. And the first thing he'll tell me, if you're not going to church, I'm coming to my house. So me being the teenager I was, brother Brown, I, I, okay, all right, I know I'll go. Wake up Sunday morning, I done broke my glasses on purpose so I don't have to go to church. My stomach hurting, I done cut myself so it can be bleeding and put a bandaid around it. He said, okay, that's fine, you ain't going to church, but you're not going to sit in this house. Nowadays, parents go to the kids, you, you want to go to church? No, ma'am. All right, well, I'll see y'all when I get back. Wrong answer. Wrong Y'all didn't want to hear that. Wrong answer. So we see that, we see, we see that Eutychus, he's around the right people. We see that he's around uh, the people of God, but, but most of all, Eutychus is around the right preacher. But of all, all, out of all the preachers that he could have get to be around, it is Paul that he gets to listen to. The same Paul who is responsible for laying the foundation for spreading the gospel. So now we have to ask ourselves, our young people, they're coming to church. They're around the people of God. They're listening to the right preacher but why is it that our youth and our young adults are still disconnected? Well, they could be disconnected because we don't know how to relay a message to our young people. All right. See, when you're trying to relay a message, there are three aspects. You have the messenger, you have the message, and then you have the receiver. What's up? What's up? Prime example, who was at bowling last night? And, and at a certain time, I guess they did Cosmic Bowl and the lights went out yeah. and they turned on the little rainbow lights and the music came on. One of you said, oh, they could have turned up now. Yeah. You know, I said, okay. And I heard one of them say, hey, go ask them to play Young and Asin. Somebody I never heard of. Them. Never heard of Young and Asin, whatever. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah. What is his name, see? Young and Ace. Okay, Spades, Club, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's his name. So I didn't understand the message that they were trying to get crossed. Yeah. So then me and Ariel was talking. And I said, Ariel, go to the uh, DJ booth and ask him to play 95 South. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel looked at me and said, 95 South. <laughs> Ariel, were you even born in the year 95? She said, play 95 South. She said, what is that? I said, go ask your mama. <laughs> 
go back, look at that tissue, and start to laugh. So the, the example I'm trying to make is that the messenger was me. The message was to Ariel to go ask the DJ to play 9 to 5 South. Yeah. The receiver was Ariel. In other words, you can't, you can't be a person who came up in the 80s trying to teach our young people and all you do is talk about the 80s and you wonder why in 2019 they can't connect with you. So then you try to blame them for not paying attention. Nah, it's because the way you have brought the message to them. So the text says that he's in a promising environment. Yeah. But in this promising environment, he has a, a, a prototypical experience. And, and, and that, proto, that word prototypical is, is mostly what most youth and what most young adults feel in church. His experience is, is typical of the example of the average teenager perspective in church. Our young people come to church and they don't feel no, no connect to adults because of the way we treat them because of the message that we're, we're trying to, to, to relate to them. We say we want to have youth programs and we get the youth out here, but they're not on program but a youth. We call that fellowship. To me, I'll get that later. Not only was he was uninterested in the preaching, but he was in an uncomfortable place. Think about it. Paul started preaching. And it says in verse 7 that he preached until midnight. Now, I never said what time he started. He could have started at 11 p.m. He could have started at 11 a.m. But just think about it. We sit here right now. We're going to go all the way to midnight. Half of y'all will be gone before 1 o'clock p.m. They didn't have a clock in the church. So they not, not, they not knowing what, what time it was. But not only is he in, uh, he's uninterested in the preaching, but verse 6 if you were to read in the NLT and the message version, he's, it says that it's Passover season, okay. which means that it's during the springtime. In verse 8, it says that many lamps was burning. All these lamps up here was hot. They probably didn't have AC back in the day. So now you can kiss, he's not paying attention to what is going on because he is in an uncomfortable position. So what does you kiss do? He moved himself to an uncommitted position position. Well, don't miss that. Right. See, see, when we get uncomfortable in church, yeah. we move ourselves from what could be comfortable to us to an uncommitted position. See, we say we want our youth ministry to grow. We say we want to do this and that for our youth, but, but when it's time to, the only thing we want our youth to do is just come in and sit down and don't say nothing. Well, come on, come on. What I've learned oftentimes is that because we are uncomfortable where we are at in life, we decide to get up and move our seat from the will of God to the windows of life uh, so that we are now in an uncomfortable position. So as the story goes on, we see that Eutychus is in church, but his eyes is in the world. We see that his body is where he needed to be but his eyes was where he wanted to be. So now he's uncommitted. See, 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 we, <laughs> Eutychus, he's torn between the Bible and the blunt. Come on, come on, come on. I think I'm gonna get no answers on that. He, he, he's torn between spirit and sex. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, we gotta be real with our young people. See, we, we come to church, and there are certain topics we don't want to talk about because we don't want our young people to know what such and such means. Well, but better we we better get it together, church, because if we don't teach them, then when they get out there, they're gonna learn some stuff that you wish the church would have taught them. Well, in First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen, the Bible tells us to to not love the things in the world. So just like a lot of our young people and love a lot of our youth, he's in the church physically, mm -hmm. but he was looking out into the world. Well, our young people are crying out because the church, and when I say the church, I'm not talking about Northbound, I'm just saying the church in general, but the church don't have anything going for our young people. We put events together, such as the youth bash or the trunk or tree. Yeah. And the first kickback we get is, why are we doing that? 
We don't understand that the method has to change, but the message is going to stay the same. Yeah. It's just like when you're going fishing. When you're going fishing and you just throw your fishing pole out with the hook, the fish going to go right past it. But then if you was to bring that fishing pole back in, put a piece of shrimp on it or a piece of meat or whatever you, bait you may use, you throw it out into the water. Now that fish has something to, to, to grab it in, to, to grasp his attention. So now that fish goes and he bites on that hook. And once you feel like you done caught up on that hook, what you do? You reel it back in. So when it comes to our young people, you may not see why we need to have a bounce house. You may not see why we need the DJ. You may not see why we need that. Well, to be honest, it's not for you. It's for our young people. It's for, it's for us to save the city of Jacksonville. It's for us to get out into the community and to meet their needs. We, 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 we have to get outside of this. Let's go door knocking. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with door knocking. But when you're talking about using an evangelistic tool to grab young people, we got to go a different route, church. Nine times out of ten, we go door knocking for our young people. <laughs> that too. But they ain't going to be the ones who won't be home. Exactly. Because remember, I told y'all they got popped on the football. They got surge uh, 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 plate area. They got Chuck and Cheese. They got the monster truck jam. So what we have to do, we got to go meet our young people where they at. See, I, I, I knew we weren't going to get too much amen on that. Come on. See, see, when we try to evangelize for our young people, uh, we need to go to Chuck and Cheese and, and ask them, can we sit outside? They they do for two hours and watch the little kids come in so we can invite them to the fall festival. Yeah. When we want to get our young people, we need to go out to the Avenues Mall Saturday night at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock when they're coming out the movies to get them to church on Sunday morning. When we want to get some other people in the church, we need to meet them at Oasis, uh, uh, Whispers, uh, 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 1 o'clock in the morning. We need to go to the club. Okay, Come on. let's be real. <clears throat> I know y'all have been to the club before. You go to the club, you come out the club, you got 10 flyers on your window, right? Yeah. Why the church can't do that? See, see we, 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 we want to say we want to save the city of Jacksonville, but we won't, don't want to get outside the four doors. I just got in my position. Let me be quiet for y'all. Have me sitting down next week. Eutychus. I gotta go back to you. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, you gotta go. Eutychus is feeling how our young people and how our youth adults feel on today. As you read the story, you will see it says that Eutychus have now moved himself in the window sill. Mm -hmm. Eutychus is now sitting in his window. And not one adult goes over to say anything to him. Nobody ever went over to Eutychus and said, hey Eutychus, you're wrong for what you're doing. Hey Eutychus, you need to come out the window before you fall. At this point, the congregation is unconcerned about his position. All right. Let me break it down. We knew he was out here slinging drugs in a game, shooting up people. Well, but it's not until he go to jail or go to prison to we want to start talking about him and calling a meeting on how we can get him bailed out. You knew she was out here having sex well, and being fast, yeah. but it's not until she gets pregnant you want to start talking about it. See, what we need in the church and, and with our young people, we need more people to restore and less people to stop reporting. See, we, we, we talk about our young people as if we never been in their position. Come on, come on. You used to be 21 yeah. at one time. At one time. You used to have a Coke bottle shape 
at one time. Come on. Now you just got, you, 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 you where you at now. You used to go out and do what it is that you used to do. And so now that our young people are doing the same thing that we used to do, we want to stick our nose up as if our stuff don't stink. And be such and such good Christian as if we never did nothing in life. And we want to condemn our young people and send them to our heaven and our hell just because of the way they walked in here. Right there. Right there. I'm gonna stay out of my position. You good. Okay. You good. I love them, y'all. Youth minister, I love the young people. Don't, don't, don't put me out just yet. <sighs> when our young people come to church, that's not the time to judge them on because he got dreads. That's not the time for us to judge him because he got tear drops. That ain't the time for us to judge him because his pants sagging. Well, the first thing we need to do is give glory to God that he's even here. Because see, once he gets in here, everything else will work itself out. See, we, we, we got we, 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 if, if we want to be that church in the city of Jacksonville, we got to change our mindset on some things, church. All right. So while we see in this story that Eutychus, he was not attracted to what was going on because he wasn't attached to any adults. Just because you're an adult don't give you a right to talk to these kids any kind of way you want to talk to them. There's a certain level of respect that you have to come to our young people. And young people, there's a certain level of respect that you have to come to our older members. So all I'm saying is, sometimes well, we gotta bridge that gap. Yes, sir. See, we gotta find a way to come together that's gonna work for everybody. We don't wanna leave our seniors out. We don't wanna leave our middle age out. We don't wanna leave our young adults out. We don't wanna leave our youth out. We gotta have a way that we're gonna bridge that gap and that we're going to come together. So we see that the adults in this church, they're unconcerned about his position. And, 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 and they are, or they were unaware to what he was doing as if they didn't realize that if Eutychus fall out this window down three stories, he's going to go. It says that Eutychus fell out the window. He fell down three stories. And not one adult got up to go check on Eutychus. Well, it was Paul who had to stop preaching and come out the pulpit and go check on Eutychus. He fell three stories. And no adult came to his rescue. Why is it that when our young people fall, we don't want to go to their rescue? Oftentimes, we, we try to figure out why is it that the church and the youth and the young adults, why is that generation leaving the church? Come on, come on, come on. Tomorrow. And everybody may have their reason why the young people and the young adults are leaving the church, but I can guarantee you that it's because they are feeling disconnected from the church. Well, <sighs> Eutychus was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continues to preach, Eutychus fell from the third story and he was taken up dead. That name Eutychus, if you were to look it up in this context, it means lucky one. So could it be that Eutychus depended too much on luck and sat in the window sill too long? See, what you have to understand, church, is that when you uh, uh, when you stay in a place too long, too long, 
you can end up falling in that place. Well, when our young people come to us, and for whatever reason that they, whatever situation they have got caught up in, that ain't the time to talk to our young people as if they don't mean anything to us. Mm -hmm. Stats show that across the U.S., the church is losing the youth and young adults generation. Most of that, that's the millennials generation. The church is losing millennials, generation X, and, and whatever else generation after that. It's because our young people and our young adults, they, they come here wanting to receive the word, but they're being judged yeah. on their appearance. Well, come on. Because we have got so used to people coming in here with a shirt and towel, mm -hmm. and our young people coming in here with shorts and a basketball jersey, we done sent them to hell. Mm -hmm. But how many of you can admit that I used to be what you at right now? See, we don't want to tell our story to our young people because we're afraid that they're going to look at us a different way. When we first started this Northbound journey, Brother Taylor asked us, we want a vision. And we just want three words to make it short, plain, and simple. The real, relevant, and ready is a vision that I have for the youth ministry. Because I wanted us to be real with our young people. We have to be relevant. We talk about you know giving them that message. And we have to be ready for whatever situation or issue that they may bring us. All right. But I understood that it wasn't just about the youth ministry at Northbound. This is a collective right. ministry. So we adapted this real, relevant, and ready vision for the church. Our young people are crying out for help. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. But sometimes we ignore them because they're not able to give the two hundred and fifty dollars every week like some of us can. Come on, man. Come on. We ignore them because they're only twenty-two years old and they haven't lived life yet. We ignore them because we just want to ignore them. Praise mom. And so what I'm trying to do on today is bring that awareness that youth lives matter. Because see, what we have to understand is that one day all of us are going to be gone. Well, But it is our prayer that if we can grow the church with our youth ministry, with our young adults ministry, Amen. they are the ones who are going to carry the church. Amen. Because at some point, everybody's going to go. And so we want to be able to bring our young people up, as Proverbs 22, 6 tells us. We want, us, want them to bring our young people up so that when it's our time to pass on, we got Josh, who can be our elder at Northbound. We got Paris, who can be our deacon at Northbound. See, we, 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 we don't want to talk about that kind of stuff because we feel as if they have forever. But we got to grab our young people because, believe it or not, we are losing them to the world. Amen. We don't want to touch certain topics in the church because we're afraid that they want to go out and do it. But if we relay the message to them in a way that they can understand, not all about just getting our point across because when we want to get our point across, we're going to teach it how we want to teach it, when we want to teach it, and whether they got it or not, we done done our job in some people's lives. But for our young people, we have to be able to be real, relevant, and ready with them. And I'll be the first to say it. I'm not going to sit up here and pretend as if I'm perfect. Amen. Because if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, I don't know about you. Come on. But if it hadn't been on my side, I'd still be sitting down at JSO. Yeah. Y'all yeah, don't want to listen to me. Come on, man. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, I'd be on somebody's child support. Well. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, I'd probably be sitting in somebody's crack house. See, y'all y'all, don't want to be real. We don't want to be real, but the reality is, this is life. People are dealing with issues. Our young people are dealing with issues. There are some things that we've done that they are just now getting accustomed to. But then again, we are like, we never done it. Well, there's one thing that they're doing that I don't think my generation did. That's even tie pods. Um, <laughs> I know we ain't do that. I don't know where y'all get that from. That's a whole other generation. Y'all ain't tired, positive, your day, Tom? No. Okay. 
the time cards that go in the washing machine. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> I don't want y'all to get that from Aria. We ain't get that. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. I know this message probably wasn't one that, that would have to shouting and, 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 and saying amen, but sometimes we have to use this platform to cry out for help. Amen. That's right. At the beginning of this year, we made the, the commitment that we want to save 50 youth this year for 2019. Right. But if you were to go a little bit further, and I think Brother Cox will bring this to my attention, that's not just only 50 youth at Northbound. Yeah. Preferably, that's 50 more families that's right. That's right. at Amen. Northbound. Right. See, when I was growing up in the youth ministry, a lot of times it was kids who was, who was coming to church and their parents wasn't coming to church. Right. But the youth ministry had so much going on to keep those kids interested to where the parents was asking, what y'all doing over here? Why my child ready to go to church every Sunday, every Saturday? Yeah. And so sometimes we had to use the kids as a bait in order to get the parents Amen. pulled in. Yeah. Our young people are crying out for help. Yeah. Whether, you, whether you know it or not, they are exposed to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And the only way that we're going to tackle this problem the only way that we're not going to continue to lose any young men to gun violence, any young ladies to teen pregnancies, is that we got to work collectively Amen. as a team. Amen. You don't have to have a child, a daughter, granddaughter, uh, 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 or whoever to participate in the youth ministry. Yeah. Because we need all hands on deck. That's right. A lot of times, our young people are caught up in stuff. And they're afraid to come to us because of our reaction. We got to change our mindset, family. We got to make sure that our young kids, our kids, grandkids know that whatever it is you're going through, I've been there. If you have a story, share that with your young person. Let them know that I used to be where you went, but this is what I had to do to get out of it. Help them to understand that they're not by themselves in whatever situation that they're in. I remember my granddad used to always tell me, your current situation do not have, do not have to be your final destination. Amen, amen. So this is a message to everybody. Whatever you're dealing with at this time, you don't have to go through that anymore. See, that thing that was your embarrassment can now turn into